This is Talk Business and Politics with Roby Brock. Welcome to today's Talk Business and Politics Daily. I'm Roby Brock. Glad to have you with us. We have Mark West with us today. He is the Libertarian candidate. Well, he is a Libertarian candidate for governor for of Arkansas. You yes. have not had your convention yet, so you don't know if you're unscathed or not yet, correct? Not yet. We'll know We'll know by Saturday. All right. So. We'll see how that goes. Now you're from uh, you're a Batesville native. You live in Independence County with yes, your sir. wife and your three kids. You uh, are you part time or full time pastor? I know pastoring is a full time job, even if it's a part time well, assignment. Well, it tends to be a full time job because there's so much that you have to put into preparation uh, for sermons, uh, for any need that comes up in the church. Because you don't only pastor and preach. If you know if, if needs come up in the church, you're kind of expected to act like the CEO and sometimes the janitor and you know whatever you need to be. <laughs> oh, uh, so it's like working in media is what you're saying. So I got be, you. Yes. So. Yeah, so it can it can be it's considered part time but it can be considered full time just as easily. And then you work for a company that does a lot of work with utility companies. You're kind of the business manager of sorts for right. uh, the uh, pretty big uh, operation. Right. There. The company's called Mechanical Construction Services. So we're out of Newark and we work in the power industry. We do maintenance and repairs on power plants uh, all over the country. So You and I were talking a little bit before we started rolling here just about Newark and that drive between uh, Batesville and Newport. It's one of my favorite drives in Arkansas because you literally you can you can see the hills in your rearview mirror if you're heading to Newport, <laughs> and you can see the plains of the Delta right there. Just describe for folks that haven't made that drive what a, I mean, it's just that's Arkansas in a nutshell right there to me yes, geographically. Yes, it is. Uh, you, when I leave uh, my home in Batesville, headed to headed to Oil Trough to pasture, you know, we first climbed the mountain um, coming out of Batesville, Ramsey Mountain, climbed that last little one, and the rest of it is you know you, you're winding and weaving and. Eventually, you get to the bottom, and once you get to the bottom of the mountains, you see mountains. And uh, the church I pastor is in the flat there in Oil Trough, right between Batesville and and Newark and uh, and and Newport. And you just sit there in flatland, and there's yeah. flatland to you know to once to the east. There's flat, and you look back west. There's mountains. <laughs> so you just sit right in the middle. Quick political pop quiz for you. Oil Trough got it gets its name from. It gets its name from bear oil. There you go. All right, he passed the test there, Mark West. Uh, he's. We should end the interview here. You're just, you're <laughs> hey, I'm ahead. Right. I'm up. <laughs> Tell me why you're running for governor, that particular office. Tell me why you're running as a libertarian. I'm running as a libertarian because I believe that we offer something different uh, than you're getting. Um, you have, typically in Arkansas, it tends to be a centrist state, uh, especially if you follow presidential elections and the gubernatorial races, it always tends to wind up in the center. And uh, what we find right now, especially with, uh, with ACE, is we really feel that we have a, a government that is working more for the big people to get ahead, the bigger areas, the more city, more urban places get ahead, whereas the rural communities in the Delta are being left behind. And what we want to do is bring free market approaches back to Arkansas, uh, free, mo free market approaches back to health care, back to how we operate businesses, how we treat businesses in Arkansas, uh, because we believe that will bring everybody up together. Because uh, right now we're in a state, uh, when you look at our economic figures, yes, they're looking good, but when you really when you really boil them down, you know, you're looking at Fayetteville in the Springdale Rogers area, you're looking at Jonesboro, you're looking at Little Rock, you know, your, your more urban areas are doing really good, but all of your rural areas, they're losing population, they're losing wage growth, you know, the, those areas are struggling. And we want to get the free market back involved to bring these areas up so all of Arkansas can come up together, so we can empower all of Arkansas. I'm not Governor Hutchinson's defender, but I will say he would take issue that he's not paying enough attention to other areas of the state. But the statistics you talk about are pretty stark. We just recently reported that 53% of the job growth in 2017 came from seven counties in mm -hmm. Arkansas. It's Benton, Washington, Sebastian, Pulaski, Faulkner, Saline, and Craighead County makes up more than half of all the job growth last year. There is a big economic and political divide in Arkansas when you look at the haves and the haves nots uh, in that respect. Um, let's talk, you mentioned health care earlier and bringing more uh, free market approaches to health care. You have said publicly that you, you're you opposed to the Medicaid expansion that Arkansas Correct. currently yes. has in the form of Arkansas Works. How would you open up Medicaid to the free market? I think that once we begin with Medicaid with the basis that 
we are compassionate people. You know, that's where Medicaid comes from, is this idea that we're compassionate to those without, we're compassionate to those uh, with need. Uh, what I would like to see, and, and, you know, everybody says, well, you know, if you oppose Medicaid, then you just want it gone, you know, and, you, and I'm like, well, no, I understand it's there. There are people that are dependent on it. You've got to have a transition process, and that's what always gets lost in the shuffle. They're like, well, you're a libertarian, you're anti-government, so anything, you're just ready to just slash it and it's gone. You know, we are realistic. We understand that there are people that depend on it. So you have to begin a process, and what we need to begin doing, and a lot of this is going to take take place not so much in Arkansas as we're going to have to work with uh, the federal Congress as well as the way health care is regulated because the health care regulation is what's causing the cost problems. Right. It's what's causing so much inflation and costs. That's why your drug prices are so much. I, I was in the hospital, uh, had, a, had a brief procedure um, over the holidays and it was 3,000 bucks for four hours, you know, and it's like, really? You know, it wasn't that major you got a thing. bargain, buddy. Tell <laughs> yeah. me $3,000. Well, no, that's so. just part of it. It's okay. just my room and gotcha. you know, it's just the room for, for four hours was 3,000 bucks. So you're looking at this and you're like, you know, the average person, they're more afraid they're more afraid of being sick than they are anything else right now because if you get massively sick you're going to go into massive amounts of debt if you don't have insurance you don't have some type of coverage what we want to do is begin transitioning from the system where we have this government funded government provided concept of insurance where you have fraud and you have abuse and you have these inefficiencies and you have some redundancies and those things taking place uh, we're going to try to transition into a situation where we're opening the free market up or we're saying to some of these insurance providers and, and other entrepreneurs out there. You can have fraud and waste and abuse you can. in the private you can. market too. You can, but you have better checks in the private market because people can opt out. You know, when you have a government program, you can't opt out. Your taxes are still going to be collected. You're still going to have to pay for it. You don't get the option of saying, well, I'm not going to pay for Medicaid because it's not working. No, it's still coming out of your check every week. So the Medicaid rules and regs come from Washington, D.C. that dictate a lot of what the state can and can't do. Right. The money comes from Washington, right. D.C. in large part. It's a state match, but the majority of it comes from Washington. If you don't meet the rules and regs at the federal level, you're not getting any of the money True. Uh, at you're the not. state level. So as governor, it's it going to be kind of tough to tell Washington, D.C. Tough, what to do. That's what we've got to start doing as a state. You know, the problem we've had is we've become too dependent on the federal money. We're, we've run into those problems with education, Medicare, expanding the Medicare. We're, we're getting where we're more and more dependent on this federal money coming in. And you constantly have this conflict in Washington. You know, they, they passed a budget, but the big deal was, well, you know, they didn't cut enough. You know, there wasn't enough cut, or was there enough cut, or did we didn't spend enough. There's always this debate with the federal budget. I don't think the state of Arkansas should have to sit around and wait to find out what Washington is going to do with their budget. We need to separate. Arkansas needs to be empowered alone. And that's part of what my campaign wants to do is find a way. And I'm not going to say I've got all the answers. I believe that there are very smart people out there in our business community and in the state of Arkansas who can help figure out how to get our state untethered from dependence on D.C. because we need to be Arkansas, we need to be separate, we need to be empowered to be who we are and not who D.C. says we should be. Let's talk tax cuts. Um, I'm, I don't know what your position is on tax cuts other than you probably do advocate lower taxes. I think that's a traditional libertarian position. How far do you think we should cut taxes and knowing that if you cut taxes, you're cutting services too. So where do right. the cuts come to pay for the taxes? Well, and that's one thing you have to look at. Uh, one thing that we've developed is, is what we've called cost. We're going to have a, uh, a committee on, uh, on taxation, a committee on spending, a uh, cost committee on spending and taxation. And it's going to be voluntary, uh, people that are already in Little Rock, people that are already uh, on staff volunteer time to help us find areas where we have redundancies, where we have inefficient programs, and we're going to and we're going to bring every agency under the microscope. Every agency in Arkansas, no matter how much autonomy they believe they have, they need to be brought under the microscope because if they're receiving tax dollars, they need to be under the microscope too. Uh, no one escapes. Uh, we're going to find those areas. We're going to cut those areas. We're not going to slash vital services, but we are going to cut areas that are unnecessary or redundant, and we're hoping through this committee we'll find those areas and be able to make those cuts so that we can save our Kansans money and hopefully make bigger tax cuts than we have right now. Um, you know, because right now Arkansas's tax rates are pretty high. You know, if you look at other states, we're pretty high, especially in this area. Uh, we need to get those tax rates lower because the less people are paying in taxes, the less people are hung up on government regulations, the more they're able to 
make better for themselves. If, if people have lower taxes and less regulations, we're empowering them to take control of their life, to be the master of their own life rather than be dependent on Little Rock or on DC for where their next meal is coming from. We need to help our Kansans get to where they're able to be masters of their own domain, where they're deciding what food's gonna be on their kitchen table, what type of job they're gonna have. And uh, part of that is gonna be cutting these redundancies and these these agencies where there's waste and, and things of that nature out. You don't think that's happening right now? No, well, I don't. The governor's got an Office of Transformation and yeah. is pushing to do some reforms in that area. And, and what you find with that Office of Transformation is a shell game. You know, we're going to cut this tax, but then we're going to raise a fee over here. You know, we're going to cut this tax rate, but we're going to try to get the internet sales tax. We're going to cut a sales tax, you know, we're going to a sales tax on used tires and used cars, and we're going to raise all these other taxes. Well, those taxes inordinately hit people on the bottom. You know, most people that, that have money, they're not going and buying used cars. No, people buying used cars, buying used tires, they're people on the bottom. They're yeah. people that, that are struggling to make ends meet as it is. And what we're saying is, well, let's raise their taxes. Or the food, you know, raising taxes on food. You know, they talked about the grocery tax. You know, it, it's a shell game. He's shifting taxes from Mary to another. So they've still got the same level of income coming in, but it looks like he's cutting taxes. And you brag about these taxes he's cut, but there's these other fees and taxes that he's that have come into place that weren't there that have made up for that income. So really, we're still in the same spot. We're not getting anywhere. Gotcha. And we want to actually get somewhere with real tax cuts where right. you're actually saying, OK, we're cutting this money the government would be getting, and we're going to cut the things that are unnecessary and wasteful so that we can make life easier for our Kansans. Let you and the governor debate that when you guys get on the stage <laughs> together there. Um, let's talk about a current event that is uh, I think very much on people's minds right now. We had the uh, high profile gun shooting in Florida um, at the school in Parkland. Uh, it's stirred a debate. You see a lot of the kids down there with some pretty raw emotional mm -hmm. um, uh, output there talking about the need for reform, for gun restrictions, for more mental health services, help for things that would improve background checks, which there seems to have uh, had some information, intel fell through the cracks on that. Um, how would you address a situation like that in Arkansas? Well, the first thing I would say is, you know, this, this emotion is real. You know, you can't minimize how these kids feel. You know, they have seen classmates gunned down, right. um, teachers. You know, these are people they're never going to see again. You know, that life for them, that relationship's gone. It's lost. So this emotion is real, and, and we can't discount that emotion. Uh, and, and we hurt with them because I couldn't imagine, you know, my, you know, I have my oldest son's in high school, my, my youngest, or my middle, my youngest son, my middle child is in junior high and my daughter is almost in junior high. So I couldn't imagine, you know, having to deal with that phone call as a parent, much less as, as my son coming home one day and saying his friends, you know, are, are dead. That's yeah, powerful um, stuff. So, so the emotion is real and we have to deal with the emotion. We have to deal with these, you know, with this issue on a personal level because there are personal hurts. But at the same time, we have to understand that we are a nation of laws. And one of those laws is the Second Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. Arkansas has its own constitution and, and Act 746, you know, on, on being able to own firearms, carry firearms. Uh, the, thing, the things that I would say is, number one, what happened there was a massive failure when you look at the systems in place. You know, the FBI was contacted on January 5th. Hey, this guy, uh, he's nuts. He's got guns. He's talking about killing people. He might even try to shoot a school up. They got that January 5th. Mm -hmm. All right, nobody followed up. Yeah. And then uh, the, the YouTube video, you know, he had made a comment on a YouTube video. That got reported to the FBI. Nothing happened. The police went to his house 39 times and not a single warrant, no, nothing put all this together. Somewhere somebody there should have been a system in place putting all this but together that, could have that wasn't. here in Arkansas. So how it do you could prevent have. something like that from happening in Arkansas if you're elected governor? Well, one of the problems we have is this idea of a gun-free zone, because gun-free zones really don't exist. Uh, you can call it a gun-free zone, but all that stops it from being a gun-free zone is somebody walking into that place with a gun. The sign doesn't stop somebody with ill intentions. Do you advocate so, concealed carry on... Uh, school campuses. Yes, I do. Okay. Um, I, I would like to see um, our campuses where teachers that by their own choice, by their own volition, decide they want to carry a firearm. Uh, they want to get the licensing and the training to carry a firearm on, on the campus. That way there's a deterrent, you know, because if I'm going to go shoot up a bunch of people, you know, say I, you know, if I flip and I'm going to go shoot people, I'm not going to go to the police department. I'm not going to go to a gun range. 
I'll, I'll go somewhere where nobody's got guns. Mm -hmm. That way I can get as many people as I can before somebody can stop me. Right. And this kid here, actually, he was leaving. You know, he had put his guns down and was mixed in with the kids, and he he had left. He had left campus, gone and got him a got him a sandwich or a burger somewhere. I mean, he had, he was gone. Um, if if you're going to do that, that's how you're going to do it. That's how you're going to pull it off. So I think that if we have this concept where teachers that choose can arm themselves, they can get the training. And there are a lot of teachers that already are trained. They already have concealed carriers. They can just start carrying on campus. They are enabled to do that. I think that will deter a lot potential of it. accidents with kids and people around firearms. If you're respect. properly trained, you're going to have the gun in a secure place. Yeah. There are secure holsters. There are ways to make sure that you don't have accidents. Um, and, and that's one of the things that you can do. I would rather have, though, a teacher have an accident where it misfires in their pocket and shoots a tile than a kid show up with, with a, a weapon and kill a bunch of kids while all the teachers can do is hide them in a closet. Last question for you. Um, you're going to be the top of the ticket if you're the libertarian candidate for governor here to keep the party alive as a political party. You've got to get 3% yes, of the sir. vote. Frank Gilbert couldn't pull it off a couple years ago. You're going to get 3%? You're going to get I, more I than believe 3%? believe we're going to. I believe we're going to get more than 3%. I, I believe that this uh, campaign is going to turn a lot of heads in this state. Um, because one thing that the Libertarian Party has been building is we've been building up. Mm -hmm. If you look at the past races, you know, the first governor's race to the second time Frank ran, our, our percentage has gone up every election. And uh, the race that I ran uh, in 2016 against Congressman Crawford in U.S. House District 1, I got 23% of the vote. There was no Democrat in there. There was race. no Democrat, but we did get 23% of the vote. But in other races in our state, we did get... Um, 4%, 5% when we did have a three-way race. So we're getting there where our percentage is up. Where we believe that this race will be able to do that and we'll be able to accomplish it. All right. Well, we'll uh, stay in touch. Best of luck Sounds to good. you. Thanks, Thanks for coming sir. in, Mark. Thank you. Right. Thanks good for having you. me. Mark West, he's a Libertarian candidate for Arkansas governor. You can keep up with him online. What's your website? It is markwestforgovernor.com, and it's the yeah. number four. I gotcha. All right. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. Thank right. you. That's all for today's Talk Business and Politics Daily. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Roby Brock. We'll see you next time. Arkansas Electric Cooperative Corporation provides electric energy across two-thirds of Arkansas. This is an exciting time in our energy history, with incredible progress being made in renewable energy and storage technologies. As our energy portfolio continues to diversify, we'll maintain an all-the-above strategy to provide reliable and affordable electricity. Ever since the first light bulbs were placed in our members' homes, the electric cooperatives have been the solutions provider for our members, and we want to continue that well into the future. Each day, the promise of our nation begins again. Arkansas and America moving forward. I help make that promise a reality. It's not for everyone, but people everywhere depend on us. Oh, I love you too, Trucking delivers or everything stops. And that's what drives me.